On today's episode, uh, our guest begin, began his journey within pro football, starting his career at Berry and moving over to Macclesfield. He is now regional manager for the largest gym provider, fitness provider in the UK. He has a GMVQ in leisure and tourism, a diploma in personal training, a diploma in sports massage therapy, and an ILM level five in leadership management. He's worked for Fitness First, Circo Leisure, and now Pure Gym, where he's been there for the past nine years and has been a huge part of the growth and development of the company, supporting them on a number of projects, which has led him to winning a number of awards, including Regional Manager of the Year countless times. As well as that, he's well-traveled, great loving uh, family man with two young boisterous uh, boys, uh, Gennaro and Angelo, that keep him well and truly on his toes. Welcome, my gaffer, mentor and good friend, Matt Buckley. How you doing, mate? <laughs> I'm very good. What an intro. It makes me sound like I'm mildly intelligent and have done a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it took me 10 years to write that, mate. It took me ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm well, as well as can be. Yeah. yeah um, keeping well, well, keep looking after yourself. Things all going okay. Obviously, yeah, I think I, I, I've been, I got, I hate, hate running. I really do hate it, <laughs> but I've got back into the running a lot up until up until recently. I had a little bit of a calf twinge, which tends to put that to bed a bit. Um, but with a, with with the littlest one in in the house, he's ju- he's just started walking last week, so he's only well, he's only eleven months, so he's pretty pretty impressive. But try try and get him in the pram and get him out and try and get about eight k done with him in a pram, which which isn't bad, a bit like our prowler tracks at work, ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play. I, I remember when Olivia started walking, it was game over from there. You just yeah. you, you got no chance, have you? You're just trying to play catch all the time. Yeah. But at least yeah. at least you're getting out and about with him. Well, he, he don't he don't mind that little walk, but other than that, he's he's no chance. He don't want to be he just wants to, you know, walk everywhere now. But it's only oh, it's the first I suppose it's the first sort of ten days of him really doing it. So I'm sure as the weeks go by that pram will be getting put in the cellar and <laughs> out of the way. So you're just <laughs> running even more. Oh. Just wish you'd sleep properly now, and then lockdown would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Play, cool. So yeah, what we'll we'll do is is obviously touch on um, your journey. So Martin mentioned there in the intro some really really good stuff, um, some really really interesting stuff. So it'd be great to hear it, hear you flesh those out a little bit and and just get your ideas and and your version of it really. So yeah, over to you, sir. Oof, well, like, I suppose a lifelong love of 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 sport in general, particularly particularly football, as as Martin mentioned. Um, From an early age, I was involved in in professional clubs. So I went to Manchester City for my sins uh, very early on. I was only only 10 uh, when I first went there and then subsequently Bury and and then professionally at at Macclesfield. So sport and professional sport and being in a, being as part of a, working as part of a team and being around a team and, Unfortunately, being around a load of ugly blokes has been uh, has been my um, my journey to to or the, certainly the start or a big focus of my of my career was that and and a hell of a lot of learnings during that time as well from um, the highs, the lows, the the wins, the losses, the rejection ultimately at the, at the end of it, um, but ultimately how to how to become part of a team and work within a team is the overriding. Uh, experience gained from from sort of that 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 shortish career. Um, after I left Pro- Macclesfield, we I played semi professionally, but by that stage, I'd, I'd sort of become aware that maybe the future of um, the career I dreamed, hoped, and dreamed of maybe wasn't going to last. Maybe wasn't going to go for it, and I'd really got into the coaching side of things. I enjoyed coaching um, and got into coaching with with kids, and I used to do it in a lot of local schools in South Manchester where I've, where I've born and raised really um, work with a lot of kids who, who how should we put this challenged behaviorally wise a little bit not on the naughtier side so needed some some direction and, and really used sport uh, football being part of it as, as a bit of a vehicle to help them in their, in their learning and their growth and development as as kids you know primary school kids um, really enjoyed that side of things and I'd stayed in touch with um, my only because I, I, he was a, a coach to the PFA rep for for pretty much the northwest of England. A guy called Osher Williams, Martin might have heard of him heard of him before. Um, and he and I said, look, well, I, I really want to get into this coaching side of things, but I also enjoyed the fitness side of things. I always had, always liked 
training, particularly when the ball came out, to be fair. But I always liked, always liked training. He said, oh, look, the, we've just signed a deal with um, the PFA ad at the time with, with Premier Global. As we know, yeah. as we know it now, yeah. we work with him very closely now at, at Pure Gym, and he said they, you know, at the time that they're really revolutionary, the top of the game. There's a number of ex, ex pro footballers who've gone through their program, and they've just set up um, shop in um, Trafford Park, as it was at the um, what was JJB then. It's what was DW, and it's now it's now gone completely, hasn't it? But I did, uh, I enrolled and did a um, diploma in personal training and sports massage therapy, which was. Um, a full-on day-in, day-out course. You went there every day, but like, you know, a university style in lectures, take your notes, do your practical. And that was 12 weeks, bang, 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 bang. Um, probably one of the hardest things I've, I've ever done that, if I'm honest, because I wouldn't class myself as, I don't know, not very ap- academic, certainly not very classroom-based individual and very much hands-on, like to be in and around it and learn as a go. So that was a real challenge for me to sit there and listen and take take it all on board. But managed to pass with 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 fairly decent decent grades and and took the plunge into being a self employed personal trainer with what was at the time the the top the top dog so to speak fit, fitness first um, and I became a self employed PT with them at this uh, Manchester City Centre branch, which was to say that was an eye opener. I thought I was pretty streetwise and hit me for six um luckily there were some good good people there some good people around me people I could learn from who would really had some good you know huge industry experience and were genuine you know genuine people who wanted you know wanted to help you um but yeah going into the PT side of things I think I could talk I could have a bit of fun I could be a bit cheeky so I did I don't I did all right but from a business point of view I didn't have a clue it went the money went in one pocket out the other side and then from a I suppose an exercise prescription or, or an exercise adherence point of view I was I was clueless I could put on good sessions up to a certain period of time and then after that I was like oh, how am I going to progress this individual or this individual's more I've become way too just just friendly with them and they're not taking me seriously and I'm not I don't mean it that way but it's become something it's not meant to be become here and I'm losing, you know, that cash I was earning in the first six months sort of, I was, I was struggling and I had to sort of reinvent myself a, a, a little bit. But luckily at, at, at sort of that time when it probably took me a good three months to get it back going again uh, and, and really just focusing on stripping it back and getting back to basics and putting a lot more business savvy uh, processes in place around payments and payment plans and and what they would get as an outcome from doing that and by adhering to to you know the nutrition was the biggest part of it that I probably didn't set out at the start I thought yeah we'll just train really hard and see what happens I think um, a lot of PTs do that though don't they like yeah. is it, when you first come in the industry we've, we've said it a few times already but that that whole looking at it as a business and you, and you come in as a business, there's, there's that saying, isn't there, that if you run it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. If you run it like exactly. a business, it'll pay you like one. And I think actually for most people, when you come into the industry, you do it because you enjoy, like you've said there, you enjoy that side of it yourself. Yeah. You want to almost make some money from your passion, but doing that is, it, it can be tricky, can't it? And you almost don't know where to start unless you've got people that you can draw on or, or mentors that you can have access to. I, I think Dan, that's the that's the the biggest thing, mate. I think people they come in this, into the industry, as you say, it's a hobby, it's something they love doing, and they, they it, this has probably never happened. But the, there's not many people walk into it going right. I'm making a serious career out. I'm not I'm not bothered about actually training myself. I'm here to make a a real career out a career out of this. And you wouldn't want that because you want people to have a real passion for what they do and a love for what they do. But that penny's got to drop pretty quick. Uh, and it certainly it certainly dropped with me. I think I got to sort of like it was the summertime when naturally people drop off anyway. But I had a dramatic drop, um, and back that was in the days where you're paying rent straight off the bat. You know, there's yeah. not like not like the way we, we run things uh, now. That you know there was was 500 quid rent from pretty much the start. So I had to really get my head around that this was a, this was a business. I need some support from a business point of view. Um, 
the, you know, there was no people knocking about like yourselves who were provide, I had to tap into, you know, and ask questions of the, the more experienced guys, how they were doing things and really be humble and go, look, I need, I need some help with this. And luckily uh, it, it twigged for me fairly quickly. I got, I got my head around it quite quickly and got, and then came back up. But yeah, like you say, you've got to treat it mega, mega, mega seriously from, from day one. It's not, you coming in, you're training with your mates every day and having a laugh. You, you've got to get a grip of it sharpish and, and really, really drive a business because what you're selling is, frankly, probably one of the most important commodities in the world. Yeah. But but your average young lad or young girl coming fresh off a course probably doesn't realise that straight away. Yeah, I think there's there's probably a mixture of reasons in there, isn't there? I think especially now with the courses and, and some of the providers that are out there, because you can do it so quickly almost, and, and there's not, like you said there, that 12-week that course or that year-long course or sometimes two-year-long course, that it, it's not quite like that anymore. So the, the entry level almost into the industry could, could be perceived as quite low, and I say it quite a lot, but that, that level three is almost like your driving test, isn't it? Once yeah. you pass that, then you learn yeah. how to drive. It's the same as, yeah. as being a PT. So, um, like you, you get your qualification, then you come into the industry. Then, as you said there, you almost are like, it's exactly the same for me, rabbit in the headlights. Mm -hmm. Where do I even start with this individual? I know how to put them through a session, make them sweat, make them work. Yeah, yeah. Actually, how to how to program that and how to prescribe them that the, the progressive programming they need is a completely different ball game. And, and even with the qualifications, it's not necessarily in there to direct you to think that way because level two just teaches you how to write a program, doesn't it? It doesn't teach yeah, you to yeah. pro progress yeah. and do that. So would, would you say that experience, you took quite a lot from that and then have, have used that through the rest of your career in terms of taking that dip and, and, and bouncing back, I suppose? Um, I'd say it happened even worse further, further down the line. Um, but yeah, that was probably the... I dealt with reject, rejection before, obviously, you know, my dream to become a, a footballer didn't come true and someone looking at you and saying, look, you, you're very talented, but we're, we're letting you go. You know, how would you get over that? You never get over that, really, yeah. I think, if, if, if I'm honest. But certainly when I'd started so well coming into that, that fitness first position and then I couldn't quite get my head around why it wasn't, I thought, oh, I'm a nice, I'm looking after them. And it, looking back, it was definitely... I hadn't set up the business side of it. I hadn't set up anything. I was just going in, like you say, making people sweat. They were calling me all sorts of names for making <laughs> them sweat, but loving it. And that, but then I couldn't get the progression. I couldn't get the the business side of it. And and luckily back then, some really experienced. But you know, like you say before, the, the, some of the guys coming off the, the these courses have got to be really lucky who they land in with as part of that team because it. That's a that's underestimated who them who they're mixing in with. You know, you look at some of the gyms we we have and we operate. There's some unbelievable personal trainers within that, and hopefully some of these newer guys get to mix with those people straight away because the quicker they can, the quicker they'll pick up some good habits. And if they don't, thought that's where it that's where it's tough from. But that yeah, that definitely sort of made me go, oh, hold on a minute. The the fitness industry isn't just a laugh, and yeah, it's just me doing me what I love doing it this is it's a real it's a business you know it's a business at the end of the day and profits and, and revenue it, it doesn't matter whether you're selling coffees phones laptops and it just so happens we're selling probably the, the most important commodity in the world which is, which is health the unfortunate thing is you can't touch it yeah. it's up to us to up, up to us to be able to sell that um but yeah, that, that definitely set me off. And then when 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 I'd sort of got the, my business back on track, um, the they used to have a role called a health um, a personal training coordinator, which was effectively a health and fitness manager. Um, and it was actually a real, it was similar-ish to what you guys sort of do now from a mentor point of view. But also as there was a revenue side to it in that you had to hit a certain rental amount per month. Uh, in, in the city centre of Manchester, as an example, that's three grand a month to 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 bring in from a rent. So you had to have a certain amount of PTs paying a certain amount. So the guy who was doing that at, at the time was promoted to be a GM. Um, the GM of, of that club approached me and says, look, we've been really impressed with the way you started, the way you recovered, um, your interactions across the gym. We'd like you to interview. So he didn't give me it. He said, we'd like you to interview. So I had to go away and it's the first time I'd used PowerPoint. 
Mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd not used, I'd not gone, you know, to uni like a few of my mates or college. Like, you know, college was one day a week because Martin, Martin will know it was a bit of a dos. Um, and I managed to pull something together, you know, my dad helped me do it and presented and eventually got the job. So I became the, effectively the fitness manager, personal training manager. But that was a real tough one because I was now managing lads and, and, and girls who, who had helped me. Yeah. So that yeah. was a real tough, tough learning curve as well. How, how did you find that? I think that's one of the, that's, that's quite underestimated, isn't it? It can be really, really tough to go from managing your peers. Well, it, it's that, isn't it? One day yeah. your peers and the next year their manager. How yeah. was that? Yeah. I met that, you know, I made, I made tons of mistakes, tons of mistakes. I'd, I've always felt, I, I, I suppose, a, a decent natural ability to, to lead but when it came to some of the decisions I was making back then and knee-jerk reactions and steaming into certain situations that were actually storms in teacups, I lost, I lost, the, I lost the team over, uh, probably over that first two, three months because I just didn't grasp what I was supposed to be doing. I thought I was, oh, well, you're managing how you've got to be really, really harsh and I'm getting yeah. in line and yeah. you'd you take too much... Um, you'd listen to too many opinions and think, Oh, I've got to sort that out because they've said it or yeah. instead of just being what I always was, which was take a genuine interest in people and genuinely wanting to help and support people. And it was only when I just went back to right, look, I need to be myself here with it. And I'd, I'd go back to those fundamentals that that team and with some new recruits that I brought in, brought in of my own uh, and developed Develop them they mix with the older lot and we, we, we developed a really really strong team a lot of that team went on to become either fitness managers or, 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 or GMs as it was uh, that day it was a really good track record so would you say that because it sounds there pretty much what I'm what I'm hearing is you've it's almost like creating a football team isn't it yeah you know what I mean so you go in you take over you start to coach them you, you get them used to your ways you bring in some some that, that are more so in line with what you're yeah. thinking of of where you want to go would you say you just transferred that or did you not even really think of it at the time or at the time I probably didn't think about it but then when I've looked back as a, a more experienced manager or leader you realize right that's exactly what I was doing I was getting yeah. the right team in the right positions so to speak to you know I, it needed a more a, a bigger female influence in that team it was very male dominated we needed some a strong female presence um we needed people who were a little bit more more technical in their approach to to training and personal training in particular instead of you know the the big lads who can lift a lot which it, which yeah. it was back then we needed we were a city center gym we attracted you know that demographic was um i mean the back of it is is, is, is barbara Oli square there's, there's lawyers there's accountants there's we we needed to 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 tailor or i needed to tailor that team to to what that demographic was and I think sub I think more subconsciously back then I, I did it whereas now I very much will purposely go after that and equally now having been through that process myself I will try where possible not to promote within the same gym yeah if that individual yeah, yeah. is good good enough to be to be promoted to an AGM or a GM I'll try to do it whereby they're promoted but they're promoted into a different club to give them the best opportunity to to hit the ground, hit the ground running. That that those first three four months there were were tough, tough learning curve. That was, um, but, but it worked, massively it worked, worked out though, right? And then, so, yeah. like you say, there you, you took that into into other roles, and and you, it's more conscious that you do it now. But the fact that you had that experience in football and in coaching yeah. seems to have subconsciously, I suppose, taken yeah. you, you, you through that, which is, is great. Yeah. So that's your, your first intro into management. Yeah. Uh, how did it go from there? How did things go from there? <laughs> it, it went pretty rapid from there. Um, the Fitness First at the time were, I, you know, I'd never hear a bad word said about them. You know, we all, everyone knows that it, it, the, the, it doesn't exist so much where that that company doesn't exist the way it was but it was phenomenal back in back in those days the the training you were given the support you were given the culture was was right up my street in in terms of how how it was a real winning mentality and a really target driven achievement driven mentality and there were some some amazing amazing people that I learned so much and I'll forever be thankful um 
to that company, but things happened at a speed, like a, a real pace, like, like, you know, like they do, like they do in pure gym now, but particularly back then it was, it was, it was rapid. So I'd, I'd gone from within the space of 18 months, I've gone from being self-employed PT to being a, a, well, health and fitness manager. And then there was a regional health and fitness manager who I reported into um, and he, he left, he left. So the regional business manager or RM as, as it was known said, right, can you do that for a little bit? I was like, what? <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> so, so um he said look you just get them on side get and i knew what they were doing you know they were my uh um peers at not in all the different different clubs in the northwest so i knew them and they knew me and and stuff and it, it was it was remote management really you weren't out and about too much i still had i still had the responsibility of my own my own gym in those stages they didn't take me out fully um but that gave me a real my first insight into multi-site management and knowing where to spend your time appropriately, not where you necessarily want to go is where, it's where you, where the support is needed. Um, and then from there, they, uh, pure gym had not pure fitness first had a, a program called future leaders, which is quite well renowned in it, or it was, um, in the fitness industry stream probably still is now from a lot of people who, who've been around a while which was basically to put people on, on this development um, course with a view to becoming the next GM. GM was, you know, huge. It's, well, it still is in pure gym, but it was, a, it was a massive, massive deal in those days. You had to have had your own club. So I went through, remained a fitness manager, but went through the Future Leaders program. The majority of people who went through that Future Leaders program back then were either from the salesy background or the member service background. It was rare they came from the fitness background, bizarrely. Yeah, it was, just, it's funnily enough, quite, quite similar in LA Fitness. Yeah. Uh, like, you, you would see that quite a lot, whether whether they took that from fitness first or not, I don't know. But that was my first yeah. experience of a commercial yeah. environment. And even me sat there, I used to sometimes think, this is just sales as, as a gym almost. But then, yeah. obviously, over time and stuff, it, it starts to change. But, um, yeah, that's it's interesting, isn't it, that, that it yeah. seems to go that Why do you think that is? I think when when the revenue maybe well well revenue look at the end of the day like I said before we we and Fitness First and LA Fitness and Virgin it's a business at the end of the day the revenue's got to be there and where do you get your revenue from you get that from selling memberships at a, a, a high yield but more importantly you get it from people staying longer and the fitness industry in my opinion has gone mainly aided by the likes of Pure Gym the Gym Group you have to say that it's gone that full circle in, in that, 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 that's the focus. Whereas it used to be the, the front yeah, end, I mean, so to speak, was the focus. And it, it was hardcore. You know, there's people don't need, need to say that. It's on BBC, it's on, been on Panorama and all sorts. And it, it's, it was, it was very much hardcore, but I'd gone through that. I, I had a genuine passion for selling it because I knew, I knew how important and how beneficial it is to pe people's lives. Whereas, some of the guys who were in, in the sales teams, they weren't from that background. They might be they're just, you know, could be from any any background, but definitely not from a, a you know a fitness industry background. So they were just, they were on commission. They they need to hit certain numbers to 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 get that commission, and they they do whatever it took to to do to that. Which sale, yeah. which you're not you're not selling it for the for the the long term benefits. You're selling it to get a num a number in which is is wrong and which is the way the fitness industry's come a full circle really uh, in my opinion but the, st the stuff I went through at that, at that company was phenomenal and set me up and so, so much learning so I got through that future leaders program um pa passed it we had like a, a class it was almost like a, like an intake each year um it was 10 of us on ours and, and there was two of us who became GM straight away uh, me and a girl a girl called Faye who went to Aintree and I, I, city boy from Manchester, went all the way out to to Crew, out in Cheshire, as a um, completely different world uh, from the bright lights and the city of Manchester to to you know a smaller town out in the countryside. Lovely town, but a bit different to to, to Manchester. And that was my first GM job, and I'd, I created a you know a bit of a reputation for myself in Pure Gym by that time. I was considered fairly decent in my job, a bit of a big, per, you know, a personality that people knew. Uh, I rocked up in crew and 
you know, talk about learning curves. I very, very, that was, you know, it was a ruthless environment uh, in terms of being a GM. You were sales, numbers, where is it? What is it? Why, why, why? Conference call crazy. Um, hit your targets or go, yeah, go yeah. and do something else, you know? Um, so do you reckon and it that's, took you back to, do you reckon it took you back to them times when you was in football? Like yeah. People asking and, and demanding a result or yeah. demanding a good performance kind of thing. Mate, ma massive, massively. And you saw people, people would say like, why, why are you not getting stressed about this? And I said, don't get me wrong, I, I am at times, but I've been in worse scenarios. And then, I, you know, I'd, I'd describe some of those scenarios. People are like, oh, all right, so, sort of get it. But the, the biggest folk, when I became a GM, I, I think that was the biggest time I thought, wow, I'm, I'm way out, I'm out of my depth here. I'm, I'm, I'm really out of my depth. I didn't, I couldn't get my head around front of house. So like the way reception teams worked, banking, but I mean the banking in Fitness First was was monumental. Uh, I'd never really seen a P and L. I was like, what on earth? Like I knew how to sell, so that sort of bought me a bit of time. But I, I had to get my head around so many things, and I had to get a team in there. And th this is where I did it really consciously. Dan, is I, I went right. The only way I'm going to survive here, I'll be out the door here. The only way I survive is I'm, I need to get some top class talent here, and in in big cities that tend you tend to get that quite a lot. You know, you people attracted to it and stuff. When you're a little bit further out in the sticks, it's not as it's not as easy to find that talent. And I had to, I was a bit, re, you know, I approached a lot of local local provide people who were already in jobs at your Virgin uh, Total Fitness. I managed to cobble together over a sort of a six month period, a team that I really, really liked. There were some rough diamonds in there, like hundred percent as there is now, Martin, but, <laughs> so, but I, I, that was my sole focus. I thought, if I don't get a team around me here, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, God knows what I'm going to do. Uh, I just worked really hard on that recruitment side of, of the piece really to, to, to get a really good team in place. And we done, we done particularly well there at crew over a I period of time. Ability. The ability to do that is huge, isn't it? To be fair, because one hundred percent, we've all probably been in situations where you're sitting there thinking, "This isn't my bag at all," or "This isn't what I'm great at." And again, I'm probably probably sick of me throwing sayings out now, but that um, that whole do what you do best and, and delegate the rest is where you need those people to come in and, and that are experts in that area, and you can lean on them and get their advice and get their support, and yeah. and then you that. that that helps you, like you said there, buy a little bit of time. But not only that, create the create yeah. everything that you want to create because you can't do it all. You, would you say that's something that stuck with you from a, being the, being in a leadership big, position? Big time, big time. And you know that that phrase to me sums it up. There's a lot of things I can do, but there's a huge amount I can't. And getting the best people around you who are particularly good, for example, at be it at finance, be it at um, operations, be it that whatever part of it, it is go and get the best person you can possibly get to be around you and want to be around you more importantly, no matter what business you're in, you'll, you'll tend to, to do, to do pretty well. If you try to take it all on your shoulders and go for it, you, no chance. My humble opinion, you've got to get the best you can possibly get around you. I agree. I think for, for personal trainers, especially because you when, when you are setting up that business and we, we speak to PTs a lot about this sort of thing, you are, all of a sudden, when you do get switch it on and think, right, I'm a business, you're all of a sudden the marketing team, you're all of a sudden the, the finance team, you're all of a sudden writing your programming, you're all of a sudden doing your own social media account. There's all of these different plates to spin almost. And I think with, with being a PT, if you initially you can't go and outsource that, but it gives you a, a good insight to be able to look at those sorts of things. Very similar to running a club. You've got to have an insight into banking. You've got to have an insight into how the front of house team works so you can you can almost steer them in your direction yeah, but then yeah. you lean on your, your experts absolutely i mean the bit of, one of the biggest bits of advice I, I i ever got given was an old 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 boss of mine at fitness first he, he said you don't have to agree with everyone's opinion but you have to understand why they have it yeah that's and you know stuck me forever that because that's just you know a bit of life advice but it stuck with me in the sense that I was like, I do not want to get involved with this banking. It just looks like a massive spreadsheet. But I'm like, hold on a minute. You're the, 
your name's above the door at that place. And that's the whole of your revenue being accounted for there. And you don't want to do it. Are you mad? Are you mad? So I had <laughs> yeah. to, get, you know, I had to really understand what all the, why those cogs turn, not necessarily be really good at doing it, but understand how it works and, and going back, you know, that, that saying is saying that, that I probably live by is understand those opinions. Don't have to agree with them, but certainly understand why, 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 why people have those opinions or in this case, why something works. Yeah. So once you've got that and, and you've, you've built this team, uh, the, I'm, I'm guessing that the gym took off, you was flying. Yeah. When did you then start to think about multi-site management again? Cause you had a taste of it, didn't you? Yeah. Did that then give you the hunger to want to go, right, this is what I want to do going forward. Yeah. Well, it, it performed exceptionally well, that site. That's a smart, it was a, just under 3,000 member sites. So nothing compared to the numbers that we do, but for, for, for a small town like crew that was highly competed, you had to, a new, well, relatively new total fitness, a virgin active, uh, and forgive me, there was another, another decent one knocking about. Um, we outperformed them all, and that was purely through that that team and that offering that that team brought together. You know, we got the best instructors, we got the best group exercise um, model we could possibly get with the budgets we had. The front of house team were just at, out of this world, cheekiest bunch I've ever known in my life. They, just, they kept me on my toes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Sales team were just cowboys. <laughs> they, they, they the, I had to keep a lid on it, but but that as long as I kept that lid on it, the the, the results followed. And yeah, look, the results. I mean, the results spoke for themselves. And you know, I'm a, I'm a. Whether it's a, a strength or weakness of mine, I'm not so sure. I've always believed that those results will speak louder than me going. I want, I want to, I want this or I want that. And and look, luckily, the 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 regional manager at the time was like, look, you you've done, you've done amazingly well. Um, there's a cluster man manager position um, coming up because such and such is leaving. So I, I want you to do it. Um, you've proved you can do it there. Go and replicate that acro across a cluster. And my my first cluster was called, what a glamorous one this was. Crew, obviously, home club. Brombra, which is now a, now a pure gym. Um, Wrexham. Um, Rumcorn. <laughs> And Telford. Bit of travelling in there. Oh, hard going that was. Hard going. <laughs> Particularly, and that was my that was my first real experience of multi-site management. So, um, luckily with that RM I had at the time, he was a, he was, a, he was quite a big inf influence on me. Just with the style he had was really because oh, the style I'd had before was quite quite authoritative, quite dictatory. Whereas this guy was, you know, he was. He was building it from the ground up. He would he'd give you bags of confidence. He'd, and he, he'd, he'd break things down quite simply and he'd, he'd teach you how to focus on the controllables as opposed to, you know, I used to be a terrible worrier. You wouldn't think that now probably some of you, but I, I used to be, I, I used to overthink everything. I think it was maybe because I had that long drive from crew back to Manchester every day that me I did, but I, I, used to, I used to be terrible with it. And, and instead of focusing on what you can, control which is probably my one of my biggest mantras now so that was my first first proper delve into multi-site management and that and that was great um that tried to replicate a lot of the stuff that i'd done at, done at crew which was around growing great teams hiring the right people keeping the right people you know encouraging people to go in you know if it's not quite right for them helping them do something some, something else not big stick and all, all, all that sort of scenario um, and then that that the RM I had at the time became the sales director for for Fitness First. He he moved on, and they, they split the regions as as we've done in Pure Gym a couple of times. And I was back with my old uh, RM, who was well. I was now back with a bit more confidence and a bit more. I've proved myself here now. I'm not I'm not that brand new uh, GM who didn't didn't know his backside from his elbow. I'm, I've got a bit about me now. So I could hold my own a lot more, and you know, eventually we became, um, I became a, a number two. So if she was on holiday, I'd, I'd do the RM role, and then she, she moved, about a year later, she moved on, and I stepped into the RM role, probably unofficially, uh, if the truth be told, for about nine months. 
but by this time a lot of the really really good people had had moved on some to LA Fitness um, down where you were at the time some to different businesses and it, and it was clear it wasn't the place it had it had want, once been so um, I started to have a little look around and and I needed something that was maybe a bit more could teach me some different things and expose me to different things as opposed to that cutthroat sales environment that that I'd been a massive part of uh, and I ended up um, despite an offer from the gym group at the time when their first gym was open or not their first or one of the first ones in, in the north of England in Manchester um, I, I went to work for Circo Leisure which was basically Manchester councils and Greater Manchester councils so I did a role there which was I was called a commercial manager but I did a, lo- a little bit of everything so it was gym operations, gym, gym sales, the swimming side of things, that is an eye-opener, <laughs> my word. It's terrible. Yeah, swimming teachers are tough. tough, <laughs> tough <breed. laughs> then you got the aqua teachers on top of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> They're <laughs> hardcore, them guys. Um, but but that, that cat, you know, it's, it's a completely different culture. You know, you, you're very, it's very unionised. There is definitely not this high performing culture it's very much oh, I'm, I'm here I'm, I'll do my hours and I'll go home I don't the development now nah, I'm not bothered about that I just could you know and, and I'm come from this I'm come from the complete opposite background into that but if I look back now I kind of needed it it kind of grounded me out a bit and, and taught me how to deal with difficult individuals you know so people who, who, who weren't in it for the right reasons people who didn't necessarily want to be there uh, but people who had the backing of you know, of unions, so it was difficult to um, to encourage people to maybe, you know, if you don't want to, you know, go and do, and they wouldn't, you know, so I had to find different ways of of motivating people, different ways of getting them on side, um, and that, it, I didn't, if I'm, if I'm dead honest, I didn't particularly enjoy my time there, but I realised I was learning quite a, a bit, and luckily my, the, um, the contract managers, they call them, um, effectively, I suppose, um, a bit like a bit like a, a divisional director w- was, and I'm still in touch with him now. Great guy, was very much, very much an inspirational type of character. He'd he'd been at, um, he'd gone through Loughborough University, played basketball in the states. Was very, very inspiring to me, and I I I learned I learned a lot from him. It was a shame that the people there weren't weren't a bit a bit too. Um, bit too over the hill with it all really um and then towards the end of that the 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 leisure, leisure jobs had got back got in touch with me and said look you know there was the gym group the, and but there's pure gym now and and this is where they're at and this is this is how they're going they had i think at the time i was talking to them they had 10 10 gyms and they were looking they knew what their expansion was uh, and knew they wanted to have someone someone in looking after the, the north so to speak and someone looking after the the South Club, so the first two RMs, um, Laura, who's with us now, was was sort of doing an RM role across the the whole of the whole of the piece, but she was going to very much move into a product role. Um, so I went and I went and I met um, Jacques, and hit it off, hit it off with him. But there, there was a, there was a delay, as as is always, a lot of the, the sites weren't ready to open, and there was probably about a three month period where. They almost like kept me warm, and then they phoned me and said, "Oh, look, you've not got the the job because we we've got more people. There's more in the south, and we know you, you don't. Miss. I didn't want to move down down there. Um, at that point, I was starting a family and stuff. So he said, "Look, we'll, we'll be in touch when there's more open in the north." And and I thought, "Yeah, I've heard that before, but fair enough." About two months later, phoned me said, "We well, come and meet me at Birch Services on the M62," and I went. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Went in, he said, "Right, we're ready for you." And here's your, here's your region. And my first region with Purgin was Stoke, Furvis South, Aberdeen, and everything in between, including Belfast. It was brilliant. Mad, crazy that. So that was like it was almost like you, it was meant to be, I suppose, in in a way. But yeah. you, you you then come into this this new environment as you said that's flipped on its head the approach is completely different um, the the culture is is more 
so fitness focused and, and whatever else from there do you think then as you've seen the company grow it'd be really really interesting actually to, to get your insight as as how the company's gone and, and what you've seen along that way because the position that that pure gym are in now is, is absolutely un, unreal not oh. even just the uk but across mm. across all sorts of, of countries so mm-hmm. it'd be great to hear i mean i never i think at the time i i, I bought into uh, you know jacques who, who was hiring me i really bought into him as a person i looked at his career and i thought he, 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 for the not for the first he was the most alike to me as an individual and I felt at ease I was leading and managing completely and utterly 100% as I felt comfortable with whereas although I'd done well before there was probably that 10, 15, 20% where I'd have to, I would have to either conform or, or, or I was completely myself and it was it was really liberating it was, it, it was great great to be around um I, I, I did i think it'd grow to what it was I, di- I didn't even think about it to be honest i was just enjoying what what i was doing but then the more i got to spend time with with, with the original founders the likes of pete roberts and brian scurrer and, and angela crawshaw and, and and these types of people the more i was like wow this, this is going to be this is going to be massive this and if i work hard um and hopefully a bit a bit of talent shines through. I could I could do really well here, and and I was very fortunate enough to become a shareholder it, it early early on in in the piece. A bit of luck with with timing, I suppose, but also also the um, the work that the work that I'd put in had got recognised, and there was a few of us who got brought into that that process. Um, but the way it grew was like phenomenal. I think the bit the biggest time when I when I was really shocked is when we acquired, I think it was eight fitness firsts and five of them were my old ones. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I took no joy in that, you know, took no joy in that whatsoever, but it was like literally they were the biggest of the biggest and we've just bought them. It, that, that, that blew my mind. I've not been, I've not been part of that before. So that was, you saw the, the ruthless side of expansion there and, and, um, it was always done in the the real the real right taste, and in some of those we we super transferred some staff who'd gone on to to do some really good things. So, God, from expansion point, we've been involved in super transfers, acquisitions, um, the IPO that didn't happen, um, but that was a real tough time for a lot of people. Um, the LA Fitness acquisition was huge for me. That was a big a big uh, time where I was. Um, semi seconded to, to to go and to go and help with that transition from a cultural point of view um doing the inductions and welcome events and and getting those individuals to understand right you may feel really uncertain and you may be a bit like genuine rabbit in her lights or you may be on the other you may be thinking what can they teach me and i know it all but it, here's what our culture is all about and here's what is what we hope you're going to enjoy and hope you're going to love and your shining example exactly of that, that, that yeah it, it, exactly that that was my first introduction into pure gym um at, from that acquisition i'd i'd trained it there's pure gym near where i live and I'd, I'd trained there for for years and years and years but i'd never really understood it and you almost had um misconceptions of, of what yep. the company was like because everyone just said it's it's budget it's this it's that it's whatever else and, and obviously from a having worked in a, a private club, which was a, a squash and tennis club, then going into a commercial environment like LA Fitness, middle of the middle of the road, yeah. you, won't, you, you never really heard all, all the great things that Pure Gym were doing. So yeah. when we got sent down to London, spent some time, you, you delivered my induction and I was just mind blown by mm-hmm. how open everyone was and how yeah. inclusive it was and how you actually, it just seemed that people cared more about the people than the yeah. sales and the numbers that were coming in. And that was just a breath of fresh air for me. And it was yeah. eye opening to, to have experienced that. And I'm, I'm presuming that that's part of the reason why the, the company has in your mind expanded yeah. to the levels it has. The cult, the culture within this company, despite how much change it's been through is at the core of why it's, why it's done so, so, so well as well. Pre, pre this blooming virus anyway. Yeah. Um, the this, this you know people have come and people people have gone and the the culture has remained the most important thing and you've you've got to take your hat off to the, to the 
to the original founders of, of the business and and the names that I mentioned before for, for instilling that. But you've probably even more so got to take your hat off to, to the likes of Humphrey, who's, who's, who's come on board as the CEO and then took it onto another level. And, and Rebecca and Rich, in our case, in the North and Paul down South, you know, they're, they're from a completely different background, but the fact that they tapped into that culture and then have driven it and, and took it on onto another level and show, just shows you how smart the, these these people are and but equally shows you how human they are and, and they realise that you're only going to, your business that you've got, whatever it is, fitness, phones, TVs, whatever it is, it's only as good as those people driving it. And, and if you don't tap into the culture, no matter where you are, I think at some stage it'll get a bit tricky for you. But I yeah. think if you do tap into it and you do embrace it and you want to embrace it genuinely, you can fly. Absolutely fine with it. Going on, to, going on to your journey as well is like, and I'm part of, I'm, I've been in your region uh, for uh, nearly five years now. And God knows how. Uh, <laughs> that's, some, <laughs> that's, something that, that's something that you, you've always tried to create. And just listening to your story, like from football all the way back, like a culture's a massive part of that. Um, and, and when you do build a culture and you've got people that are willing and, and, and want to strive and work hard for that culture, you can then start to see why it grows so big and why it becomes so successful. Um, early on, you was, just before we come on, you was chatting about uh, the 16th club and, and when, yeah. that opened, when that opened your eyes up to like pure gym. Did you, yeah. you just run through that for everybody? Oh, so um, goes to, get, gets on the train, go, goes, goes to London. Now me getting on the train, going to London, just that, that, that wasn't normal for me back then like it is now I suppose that was like even that was just a you know a bit of a big deal so then gets to Oval I'm looking at this building thinking what what was this building and there's this big sort of ramp out the outside of it so I'm like is this the building is this it and then I saw all the signs and I went one of the um architects with it was there and I said what what was this then and it was the old where they used to build the taxis the black cabs and then send them out on this ramp <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, so my head's like, I'm going, I never knew this side of, I didn't, you know, prop, the property side of it now, um, you know, in my personal life and also with work, fascinates me where they, where they get, you know, you, you'd think, I used to think naively, I've just thought they were all purpose built to be a gym. Mm -hmm. how, how wrong was I? So that was probably the first little eye opener, just that it used to be a big, where they built the black cabs. But to see the queues of people, and I, despite working for Fitness First, as long as I did, I've never done like an, a, a proper brand new opening. I've done refurbs, but not a brand new opening. So to see how many people were queuing and then to see how many people were coming in and then also to see how many people were joining on the day. So if you, at Fitness First, if you did, did, did a double digit day, that was like, as in, you know, 10 or 15 people joined, you'd probably only do that on the last day of the month and you'd probably be dropping your price to do it. On an opening day back then, I think that over one, I think they did, I think we did over 700 joiners in a day on the opening day. I was like, I couldn't, I, literally, I, was, I was literally speechless. I was like, and then obviously subsequently I've gone on to do, well, sounds arrogant, but God knows how many openings now, but I did just nature of the beast being with the company so long. And it just never ceases to amaze me that as soon as you start doing opening for viewings and that opening day, it just went through the roof. But of course, because it was my first day with the, the company, I didn't have a clue how you set all the memberships up and the little quirks of how they got their pin numbers and stuff like that. So I literally had to learn it really quick. And it was a diff completely different, it was like five systems ago, I suppose. Quickly had to like figure it out because I was on... I was on pin duty. In other words, if people come and say, oh, my pin hasn't worked yet, you'd have to sort of reset it. And, and they'd be fine. So I was like, non-stop. I lit, it's like f four hours, I didn't come up for breath. I don't think I had a drink. It was, <laughs> oh, just, it, was, it was amazing. And then we all went out for a few drinks that night and dinner. And it was just, I just thought, wow, what have I joined here? This is, this is ev what every day is going to be like, you know, once a month, twice a month, this is what it's going to be like. It's, yeah, it was, it was pretty special that. Yeah. That, and that was again like part of the culture that was within the company wasn't it yeah 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 it was just you know great great people doing great things but going back to that the i don't know well he must have done it on purpose but he 
there was a definite trait of every every individual in, in that they were very genuine, very down to it, very fun loving, um, but but wanted to win, wanted to wanted to achieve something, um, and there was not you know. When, you, when you've been around businesses long enough, you, you'll see who those people are. But when, you, when I came to Pure Gym, I was like, wow, it's literally everyone is going in this direction. I hadn't been used to that before. You've been used to maybe half or a quarter of it being like that and the rest maybe not being on the bus, so to speak. But yeah, culturally it was, was and is phenomenal. Yeah, so it's, that's obviously the the legacy, isn't it? It's nice that the, it's been there from the roots, and it's it's still to this day very very prevalent, and everyone sees that that every single day. So you, you kind of breezed over some of the projects that you've been involved in, then, but there's quite a few, quite a few there, isn't yeah. there? Do you think it was that that maybe made you stood out, stand out to be the person that was was selected for those? <laughs> um, the tough one for me to actually be, yeah. answer because it's other people deciding it. I think the only thing I would say is that my passion or my obsession or it is around leadership and, and people development. That's what I'm passionate about. And that's why I'm not overly concerned where, um, where my career will go, will go in the future because the fundamentals will be looking after people, developing people, showing people that, the right way to do things or, or get them to aspire to be better than they are. It just so happens I'm doing it in the best industry, selling the best thing you could possibly sell. Um, but yeah, some of the, some of the projects have been, yeah, like, and I think the probably the only reason is I'm just a real people person I can get. I've always managed to focus on getting buy-in quite quickly. I think I'm relatively, it, it, it comes, a lot of things come out to me that, that doesn't, Per, per se, quite just because I enjoy it, I really enjoy it. I'm I'm genuinely interested in people, like genuinely. I'm not. not, not I'd I'd like to think no one's ever had a conversation with me and thought oh, it was a bit forced or he's asking those questions for an ulterior motive. Yeah. So I think they just thought, look, there's there's no one at that period of time, particularly with that LA Fitness Project, who can describe and get people bought into what we're doing it in a real quick snapshot. Because that's what it was. You know, it was a day. It was half a day, wasn't it? You know, they had to get it to land properly. So when when the guys at the time asked, it it was a day and a night, and I definitely remember the night. (laughs) Parts of the night, anyway. Yeah, parts of the night. Well, that was part of it. You know, that was part of, and it still is. You know, having, you know, I love the same work I play hard. There's nothing, there's nothing better than it. And taking people out of the environment of work, having fun. And, and letting those defences that you, you find out a lot more about people, and you can, you can, you can then relink that professionally, link, link that, you know, link that into into work, and you, you know, you get to know about them as a person, what their family's like, what what they really like, what they don't like, you know, if you're you're going in f- first time and you're meeting someone in a gym and the defences are up a bit and they're a bit like, well, I don't know what this this Matt's like or Dan or Martin's like, I don't ever know I can say that or not say that if you. From, you from day, the quicker you can get the defences down a bit and understand more about them, the quicker you'll be able to tap into them as an individual further down the line to to push the buttons to drive the result. And yeah, you, get to, you get to understand their, what their vision is or where they want yeah. to go. And, and, and I think that's, well, we talk about it all the time. It's massively important. I mean, you, you've done that with me um, mm-hmm. as part of my journey with the company. Uh, there's one project that we was all part of. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh the God! PTSC one is <laughs> what, 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 what us to touch on a little bit is uh, you talked about calling on uh, supporting and, and and helping and, and what your skill set was, and I was part of that as well uh, yeah. alongside you, and we had to go in and, and present this product what uh, what was unheard of to all these PTs that wasn't paying a rent at all. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk about that because you did need to have. Um, like you need, needed to get by him very quickly, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you know what? I suppose you could, you know, the situation the world finds itself in now, you know, no, nobody knows how to quite handle it, do they? Well, or they certainly didn't. They didn't know what was coming. It was probably the same with, with that. Or the amount of work we'd put in behind the scenes before we launched it, we thought, yeah, well, we've got this as best as it, it can possibly be. 
until you actually launch, go with it, you, you don't actually know. And the first few few meetings were <laughs> a bit car crashy, weren't they? To be fair, um, but we refined it, didn't we? And each time we came out of it, we, we'd ask each other questions, we'd ask the wider group questions, we get we get feedback, and and just refine that refine that approach. I think the reason we were asked or I was asked to launch it in, in my region is this, just we'd had, we'd had a track record of good development. We'd had a, a decent retention level. I wouldn't say it was the best, but we had a decent retention level. And we had a lot of people who were, or, and still are uh, managers and leaders within, within that team, who had a passion for PT. Um, so, and it was the biggest region and well, it still is. And by that, I mean amount of clubs and amount of members. So the, Though, if you throw all that in the in the pot, there was a lot of reasons to to go ahead and and do it. I think we just re kept refining our our approach of it, and it was a hard one to land. Uh, you know, we were ripping up the rule book when it came to to a PT model. We were employing people who had some have never been employed in their lives. We were telling people that they were now employed, but they had second jobs, so it would hurt them from a tax point of view. There, there was a whole host of, of things, but if you it's probably one of the things I'm proud of the most because if you look where that model is now, mm. um, pre-lockdown when when it was launched across the business versus what it was then, mm. well, we we and I'm looking at you here can, and you two in particular are out with it. We've molded that mm. like massively, and that's the biggest shift change pre-lockdown that Pure Gym's ever ever been through, and the fact that us guys on this call and a lot of people off this call were, were a big part of that and shaping that is that's, that's big. It's big. Shouldn't forget that. I, th I, th yeah. I feel like the very first meeting we did compared to the very last meeting before oh. we went, like how many, how like the worlds apart on it. Yeah. And people yeah. just got, got what it was about understood. Whereas the first one, it was like, pff, just fireworks. I, re I remember after we did the meetings, we, we had to go for one of those. <laughs> we had to go out and, and just. We did just have to go out. <laughs> <laughs> we did have to go out after, after 12, 12 meetings in, what was it? 12? Yeah. Three a day, wasn't it? So 12, yeah. yeah. And we just, that I think was Thursday night, wasn't it? And we were just yeah. like, last one was Stockport. And we were just like, yeah. I've got to have a pint. We <laughs> <laughs> had several. Yeah, whereas the very last last one, it was just very straightforward, very easy. Yeah. Everybody got it quick. And, and it, it is, it's, it's just mad that we was part of that and we've helped yeah. get it to like the, how we speak. It's huge. It now. It's, it, it's, it's huge. And look, whatever, you, whatever anyone goes on to do um, it, within Pure Gym, hopefully, or, or, or within their career, you're probably not, well, if you have something harder than that, then to deal with, then, you know, you, you go in some, aren't you? But you, and that's, I suppose as a leader, that's what you've, you've always got to lean on your experiences and learn from your experiences, it, be, you know, be it rejection, be it mistakes, be it projects that you've been on and, and, and learn from, um, be it winning awards, be it not winning, you've got to, got to always build on and learn from those experiences but always be sure to pass them on to the people you're working with you know I'll, i'm forever telling little tales to you guys and hopefully they, they sink in and you take you take them away because that's the most important thing anyone can go and do a project of some sorts but it's the learnings and then the sharing of those learnings with with the with the wider group you know if you're any type of leader should be developing leaders around them a decent decent rate and if you look at the track record of of pure gym in particular you know superb at that you know that first region i had people who are still within the business now doing jobs that they're doing that you know i don't know if it might not make sense to, to but you know the likes of jake roster and amp park joe annettes rich annettes and townsley they were all in that first region some of them as agms you know look at them now yeah, and that's what it's that's what it's about. It's keeping developing the le the leaders around you, and going back to that, getting the best team around you. Yeah. I think the a big thing that come out of that then is just you guys talking about that very first meeting that you did, and then how how well the last meeting you did went. Just thinking from from a PT perspective, or or from anyone who's launching any sort of business from from the the comfort of their own home, 
you've, you've kind of got to take that action, haven't you? And just sit there and think, right, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know whether it's going to work. I've never been in this situation before. I've never launched a podcast before. I've never um, set up social media. I've never done a live video before. And almost accepting that that first one is going to not be very good um, or not going to go as you would ideally want it to. And then you, you refine it and you, yeah. you tweak it and build it as, as you go. But, again, is that just a, a case of learning from experience? I, look, you can't put a price on experience. You really, really can't. But I think the, the sooner in your career or in your life you get good at asking for feedback and I suppose more so than that, except, you know, I was a nightmare with it. If I, someone gave me some or that I perceived negatively, I used to be a bit of a nightmare. And I'd overthink things and be defensive about it. But, you know, any type of feedback's going to help you, good, bad or indifferent. Because even if it's, even if it's bad feedback and it gets you back up a little bit, it might get you back up to the extent that drives you on a bit. Yeah. If it's really, really good feedback, you might then go, right, I want to make it better. Or you might have one person in the room who thinks this podcast was amazing. You might have 10 others who thinks it's, it's useless. Well, go and go and ask them why. Yeah. And I think as long as people can give you examples, like genuine examples that you can understand, then you'll always you know, be in a really good position to then mold that into what, whatever you're doing. Cause it's, it's not easy that, you know, doing this is not easy. It's not, it's not, and not any, not anyone can just go and do it. Not anyone can just go and do that that PT project if you just went in and blindly says well this is the message I've got to deliver I'll deliver it as quickly as I can and I'm off that's not buying into culture that's not being in it for the long term that's not wanting to genuinely help people that's doing a job yeah I suppose that comes back to what you were saying right at the beginning of, of getting the right people in the right positions as well isn't it to deliver those sorts of messages and yeah. again just thinking of a a PT maybe leaning on other people that have have been in the position they want to be in or have launched something similar to, to what they want to launch we, we talk about podcasts and stuff that we listen to and watch all the time and, and want to take bits from and, and integrate yeah. into this and hence why we get the get people like yourselves on so we can learn some nuggets hopefully yeah I, I don't know if I, I think the, P, the <clears throat> you know I spend a lot of time in, in and around PTs and it shocked me um still does shock me sometimes that people wouldn't want to in, in, in other, in, not so much ours, but in other, in, in, you know, they're the, la they are 1 million percent the lifeblood, but the quicker we can help them and educate them, you know, simple, simple stuff like, right, you've just joined us. Joe Boggs over there has been with us for six years. Go and ask them, go and spend some time with him. Don't think you've got to do this all just because you are a, you know, a self-employed individual, you are very much part part of this team and there, there are some very successful people in this team who can go and ask them questions, go and, go and shadow, go and watch them, go and spend time with the best people. I say that to the, the cluster managers and the GMs all the time. I don't, don't just listen to me. Who's, who's, got the, who's got the biggest membership base in the company apart from, obviously, you've got Urban Exchange, but what Hammersmith doing? Phone him or her. Go ask them what are they doing. Who, who, who's the PT who's been in the business the long? It won't be too hard to go and find out. Phone them, ask, ask for a bit of their time. You know, go and go and spend some time with these individuals. It's, it's, that's no different to me. You know, I've spent time with Humphrey off my own back. I've gone and spent time with uh, Rebecca off my own back. To, you know, I want to keep growing and keep getting better. Yeah. It's, I'll, it's been great that I've been involved in so, so, so many different projects that. Although you could, you could, I've been an RM the whole way through it, but it's not felt like that. But I've definitely got aspirations to go and do, um, take the next step. The only way I'm going to do that is by being around people who've taken that step, not thinking I've got to do it all, all on my own. And not, same with PTs. If you're coming fresh off a course, right? Who's earning the most here? Who's been here the longest? That help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Why do you think people don't necessarily go and approach it with that mindset? Fear, maybe. Yeah, I, th I think sometimes they just they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, Dan really, um, and they need quite a lot of people need that bit of bit of encouragement. I think maybe some of them are a bit. You know, I watched that. I don't know if you watched that Prince William documentary last night. You know, the the mental health thing. A lot of people don't want to ad admit they maybe need a bit of help. Um, 
again going back to the fact they think it's a hobby and not well, well I know how to train I know how to do yeah but, yeah but you don't know how to run a business do you you, know, you never have so we need to help you with that and you know that lad over there or that girl over there is doing superbly well at it you know let's let's link you up and, and get you involved if I was a, you know GMs and AGMs the second you've got lean on your team get get your team to help you to help you to do it don't think you've got to do you know granted we've got the, the business coach which is phenomenal and we've got people like yourself supporting but don't forget within that team you'll have loads of people who can help because we are spending more time in that staff room and on the gym floor with those guys than they will with you guys yeah. so are they being influenced by the right right people? Are they picking up the phone to the right people? And get that in their head at early doors and take it on yourself as a, as, as a leader to make sure you've got that into Because they probably won't, you know, young, impressionable people, they won't, they probably won't realise that they need that help, but they do. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Class, and thank, thanks for coming on, mate, and sharing your experiences with us. Uh, before we finish, we have a couple of questions that we ask people. Uh, oh. do you want to go with the first one, Dan? Yeah, um, so if you had, uh, so you've got, what, we're doing guests first? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go guests first. So running a dinner party of your own, they can, you, you three guests can be past or present. Uh, who would you choose and why? Uh, oh, gosh, that is a good question, it. Um, well, I'd have to say Sir Alex Ferguson. Um well, he, like, he likes a good drink, so that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to the pie. But I think, look, I mean, talk about leadership and, you know, uh, he's obviously got a couple of books, but his book, his book that's called Lead, uh, Leading or Leadership, I'm trying to look for it now, I think he's probably one of the best books I, I've read and how he deals with different characters and certain things he might do with one and not with another. And just, for, you know, whatever team you support, I mean, I think it just so happens I'm a United fan, but... I definitely have him. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big hip hop fan. I've always been a huge hip hop fan. I'd love to spend a bit of time with Jay Z, not just for the music, but the business. You know, he's yeah. a trillionaire more or less yeah. now, isn't he? So you know yeah. that'd be amazing to get an insight into where he's come from. <clears throat> you know, the projects in New York to where, to to where he is now, and and that journey. I mean, talk about a podcast. I'm sure there is one somewhere, but that that would be a pretty amazing one. Mm. Um, and then I'm a huge, not many people know this, I don't think, but I'm a huge basketball fan as well. So I think Mr. Jordan would be, I mean, what a table that would be. That's not <laughs> bad, that, is it? Have you what watched, a bad table, last, that. Watch the last dance. Yes. Yeah, yeah of course. Very good. Of course. I've very not good. seen very. it yet. It's worth, it's well worth watching. Yeah, it's a must. Well, well worth it's a must. I thought I knew because growing up, we're we're same same yeah. age, Martin. Growing up in that, I thought I knew the story. I thought, yeah, I know that bit. I know that bit. But my yeah. word, my word, it was un, un, not unbelievable. Unbelievable how good it was. But just just like what I mean, what a guy. What. What a guy! I'd love to. Uh, yeah, dinner party. He seems a good crack as well. Okay. I, I might have said this before, but the only reason I ever supported uh, the Chicago Bulls or watched basketball was just because of the film Space Jam. That's the only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only reason because it. Came, I swear, it came out. Of, I must have been what seven, eight, nine around that sort of age. Yeah, and that was the only. That was originally what drew me to it, and then you just start yeah. to think, how, this is the only guy who's ever been put in a position to make a film. With the likes of Bugs Bunny, who's just a superstar, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? yeah, uh, <laughs> we, we, watched, we watched Space Jam the other day, me and, me and my oldest. He, he, lo he loved it as well. Like It's just class. But yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be three people I'm allowed. Yeah, three. No, no, you three. No females there, though, is there? That's, that's a bit poor. Can I have a fourth? Go on, then. Go on, then. Margot Robbie. <laughs> what an actress what an yes. actress so you've got to, you've got to have a, ba a balance there so with, with the, the so she she i love her as an actress I think she's she's funny she's serious she's a, she's an, an aussie at heart which i love that country so um there you go there just you for go. a bit of balance and to be just and, and then because you like you like your grapes what would be on the table oh what vino yeah, yeah. Right, so we've got so we've got a Scots Scotsman. 
two Americans and an Aussie, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Probably have to go. Probably have to go a, re- a real, a real strong Shiraz for that for for for, for those guys. I'm into my, I'm into the I'm into my Zinfandels and Pinot Noirs at the moment from, um, and, and I've got into you know your non-traditional plates. So for us like the USA, the Australian ones, um, but I'd probably yeah big a big Shiraz from the Bur- from the Barossa Valley in Australia would probably be a good good shout for that group of people. This is probably going to scare the life of you, out of you now, but I, 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 I'm a big fan of grapes. But the way that I drink them comes in a completely different form. So I've, I drink brandy, don't I? So I've, I'm not big oh. wine. I've, I don't really know much about wine, to be fair. So like, what, why that one? That's a strong. If you, so if you get a, you get a Barossa Valley Shiraz, that's a you know really strong, full-bodied type type of wine. Very ro- robust, strong on the strong on the palate, so to speak. So that one would fit in well with those those characters I, w- I, w- I would imagine nice. cool. and um free course dinner you don't have to be able to cook it but what would you be serving at this dinner because i know you like your food as well so i do mate that's that's a hard question to me because it's too much too much i like um well I've, as you well as you know my wife's wife's from italy and family from italy hence the two boys two boys names so I think maybe for a starter, a bit of a uh, uh, melanzana parmigiana, so aubergine parmigiana to start with. It's always a nice one to start with, nicely baked. Uh, I think for Maine, we'd probably have to go, maybe go with 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 a nice bit of fish actually for me. Maybe a bit of bit of halibut or a bit of uh, yeah, maybe something something like that with some, maybe some. Dolphin wise potatoes or something like that on on the side, a bit of asparagus, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go a cheese board for sod the dessert. I'd just go a cheese board with, and that's when the brandies could come out and the whiskey. There we go, we'd be well away. No, <laughs> there you go. Is that off then because he's done cheese board as well. <laughs> yeah, you, you can keep the cheese, I'll just have the brandy, we'll be well away. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then lastly, um, you're standing on a desert island. Uh, one album, one album only. What you taking? Oh, that is. Re- I, I got asked this question the other day, and the so I am you know big into my music and forever downloading stuff and the old stuff and and the new stuff and because of Jay Z, I think Jay Z Jay Z's album Reasonable Doubt is a huge album. So, so the stories that he tells on there are just amazing the beats the melodies very relaxing to be fair versus some of the more modern stuff so yeah jay-z reasonable doubt nice mate it's a decent shout there there's there's lots of of uh where well, there's, there's what is that the second shout for reasonable doubt i think it is isn't it yeah, yeah. there we go yeah. starting to starting to clock up some fans we might be able to get him on at this right <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that there you go boys dream big <laughs> amazing but no really uh, Martin said it but really really appreciate you jumping on it's been great to have you and, and nice to hear your journey and, and get uh, get a real insight I think we do get stuck in the day to day sometimes and don't get a chance to really have a sit down and have a chat like this and, and understand others so it's been really great to hear really appreciate appreciate you jumping on and um, for the listeners if you do want to subscribe if you click down in the bottom corner that will allow you to get an update every time we have an episode released uh, so please do jump on there other than that we thank you massively for jumping on and listening and we'll catch you all next time have an amazing day see you soon pleasure guys thank you